Hi everyone, in this screencast today we're going to be looking at from birth, uh, looking into in the reproductive system, identifying all the stages that happen from the production of the sex cells, the gametes at the start, all the way through to the birth of a human baby. Okay, so I'll give, start off by giving you a bit of an overview of what we'll talk about in the next few minutes. So firstly we're going to look at the process of how the sex cells are formed, the gametes, um, all, all the way through to the, to the very end stage of when a new human being is born. We're going to look at key stages of development that happen in that process and also placing them in their correct sequence. And then we're also going to identify some key vocabulary. Okay, so make sure that you're taking notes closely as you watch. So first of all, we're going to start off by looking at how the gametes are produced. So we can see here we're talking about sperm production inside the testes in the male. Now you don't need to be able to identify all these details by any means, but just to show you kind of how that process works, happening inside the seminiferous tubules, existing inside the testes, and then they move to be stored in the epididymis. We can then also see um, the process of producing an ovum, an egg, inside the ovary um, for a woman. So we have eggs that are produced in the ovary and then um, every month at around about the same time, depending on the woman, um, that one or potentially more eggs are released from the ovary to travel towards the uterus. Okay, so before these, unless these processes happen, uh, there's no possibility of a baby being formed. Um, so sperm production in the man, um, ovulation in the woman as the first stage of the process. Okay, but so then we get to sexual intercourse. So sexual intercourse is, is necessary or the, uh, and the main way that um, the sperm and egg are allowed to meet. So ejaculation is the process um, by which sperm are released from the male reproductive system so that they're able to head towards where the egg is inside the female reproductive system. So this typically is in sexual intercourse, but um, with other techniques like in vitro fertilization and otherwise, um, sperm can be introduced in other ways that have been developed. But so we're seeing so that sperm produced inside the testes and then make their way up through the vas deferens which passes its way through the bladder and when it gets to the prostate the, um, and the seminal vesicles, fluid is added um, that then contributes to semen and then it makes its way out through the end of the penis, typically during sexual intercourse. So the sperm are introduced that way. Once they're inside the vagina, the idea is that the sperm will make their way up and through. So they will make their way up through the vagina, passing through the cervix into the uterus moving their way up towards the fallopian tube, which is where fertilization is going to happen if all of those uh, things are right. That's where the ovum or egg is going to be encountered. When we get to that point, now fewer than 100 sperm will actually make it that far, but if the egg gets that far, then one sperm um, will enter the egg and fertilize it. Now, the great thing about this is that um, that it kind of triggers this process by which it shuts off the outside of the cell so that no other sperm can penetrate. To, to allow fertilization to happen because otherwise you'd end up with too many chromosomes inside the cell and it would die. So once one makes its way in, then everything else stops. Um, but it's, it's amazing when you think that about 150 million sperm are released during the ejaculation, but only a tiny fraction of them will survive to this stage up inside the fallopian tube. Okay, so um, then what happens, so this is the showing the fertilization process of that sperm making its way into the side, into the egg. You can see that proportionally speaking, the egg is much, much larger than the sperm. The egg contains all of the parts uh, of the, that the resulting cell will need to survive, all of the other organelles, whereas the sperm is basically DNA contained inside um, a, a little packet that contains mitochondria as a source of energy, and then a tail which allows it to move. Um, that's really all it is. It's a, it's a chromosome delivery mechanism. So once the egg is fertilized, then we begin the process of the new organism forming, growing and developing. So what we have when that egg and sperm meet and fuse together, we form a zygote, the fertilized egg. So zygote is that term um, for that cell that exists at that point. Over the process of a few days, that that cell starts to divide, like in order to make new copies, two, then four cells, and then that cell division continues all the way through as that egg to gradually makes its way into the uterus, forming new cells. By the time that we get to the point where it's entering the uterus, um, it's formed a clump of about 80 cells, which is called a morula, which you can see just appearing on the screen there. So that's the name for that, that small bundle of cells, that they are identical at that stage, 
um, but there is a much larger number of them than there was when we started at one. As it's making its way towards the wall of the uterus, uh, which is where it's eventually going to attach, um, that then it becomes what we call a blastocyst. So as we're getting to that stage of blastocyst, so it's a fluid filled ball that the cells are starting to uh, differentiate, we would say that um, they're becoming different types of cells, um, which will start to develop into the different systems in that, um, that fetus that will develop. Okay, so in that, um, so we get this process of implantation where this, this blastocyst attaches itself to the wall of the uterus and it starts this process that allows that developing embryo to be nourished, develops a blood supply. It's where, the, where what we call the placenta will develop um, at, that, at that point of where it attaches um, as a, uh, a supply source for all of the nutrients, all of the oxygen, all of the glucose and all the other things that developing embryo is going to need in order to grow um, and develop to maturity. And so once, you know, now we begin the process of all of those different systems growing and developing. As you can imagine, we're starting out very, very small, but you know, in a very short space of time, that, um, that blastocyst develops into an embryo, which is in that first eight week period, we call it an embryo. And then it starts to, we, you can start to see physical features, whatever you're gonna become, arms and legs, ears, eyes, the shape of the head, the spine, the, the retina, the rib cage you can see on that image. All of those are starting to develop. Once we get past the eight week mark, we call it a fetus. Um, and so it will be called a fetus right up until the moment that it is born. Um, and so you can see the, the image on the right is of a fetus at a much later stage of development. All of the systems are, are starting to develop inside, um, continually nourished by the placenta, which grows alongside the baby until it, it ends up being around about this big by the time that the baby is born. Um, and so then it gets to a point at which it's fully developed around about 40 weeks um, of gestation, we would call it that period of development inside the mother. Um, and then that baby is ready to be born. So um, we have the placenta, which is what nourishes it. The umbilical cord attaches the placenta to the, um, to the baby by the belly button or the umbilicus. And then it's encased in what we call an amniotic membrane. That's the fluid that surrounds the baby that allows, um, you know, that, that um, basically keeps it healthy, keeps it, um, you know, it controls the water levels um, and also helps to protect it from the outside world from, you know, so that it controls what comes in and out of the baby's body. Okay, so what goes in must come out. Then, so we get to the point of labour. Um, at some point towards the end of that gestational period, that 40 week sort of time, um, the baby needs to come out. Typically that's being delivered out through the vagina. Um, so the cervix, which connects the uterus and the vagina, um, dilates it, it gradually during, so we get this process of labour happening where that, that cervix starts to spread apart by muscle contractions, which is what pregnant women are experiencing in labour, that opens up in order for the baby to be fit through, uh, to fit through, um, typically head first, or that's how it's supposed to be. Um, it's got to be wide enough so that the head can make its way through and then the rest of the baby passes through um, much more easily after that. Um, so it's, an, it's called labour for a reason, it's an exhausting process, um, but that's the process by which the baby is born um, and then the placenta comes out afterwards. And so then we have a little baby. So this here is a photo of my youngest son, Ezra, just after he was born. And so that's kind of going through that process. All right, thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.